Does dairy cause multiple sclerosis? Several proponents of nutritional plans for multiple sclerosis, including Dr. Terry Walls, Dr. George Jelinek, and Matt Embry, all advise you to avoid dairy for multiple sclerosis. But are they legit? In this video, we will examine the evidence behind the putative connection between dairy and multiple sclerosis. Let's have some fun. I'm Brandon Bieber, and I post informative videos about multiple sclerosis every Wednesday. So if you're interested, please click subscribe and ring that bell. Now, there is some epidemiologic evidence for the association between dairy and multiple sclerosis. An old study in the US published in 1997 did show a relationship between milk intake and the risk of MS. And worldwide, there also seems to be a link between milk consumption and multiple sclerosis. For instance, if you look at the countries with the highest milk consumption per capita, such as Finland, Sweden, the Netherlands, these are all high risk countries for multiple sclerosis. Now, if you look at the countries that have lower milk consumption, a lot of these have a lower risk of MS, although in Iran, the rate of MS seems to be rising. If you look at a global map of per capita milk consumption, it relatively closely matches the rate of multiple sclerosis. Now, there are a lot of potential confounders here, other aspects of Western society, sunlight, parasite exposure, Epstein-Barr virus perhaps, but there does seem to be some association here. Now, this is a Danish study that looked at different occupations, and believe it or not, the occupation that has the highest risk of multiple sclerosis was dairy workers, and presumably they consume more milk than the average Danish person. Uh, and there's some basis for a possible connection in terms of basic science. Children with demyelinating diseases, in other words, inflammatory diseases of the central nervous system, tend to have an abnormal T cell reaction to cow's milk. There's a particular protein in milk, proline-rich polypeptide, PRP, that is known to promote activation of T cells, and T cells are part of the inflammatory drivers of multiple sclerosis and can be found in many pathological sections of brain biopsies and autopsy specimens of people with MS. Now there's this interesting protein called buterophilin that is thought to be the cause of the connection between milk and MS, perhaps. And it turns out that buterophilin physically resembles a protein in myelin known as MOG. MOG is myelin oligodendrocyte glycoprotein, and it's known that antibodies against MOG can be found in multiple sclerosis spinal fluid. And it turns out that those antibodies sometimes can cross-react with the milk protein buterophrine. It's this idea of molecular mimicry. Your body sees buterophilin and thinks that it's myelin and learns to make antibodies against your myelin. And there's a specific extracellular IgV-like domain of MOG that kind of looks like part of buterophilin. Now, this has been tested in animal studies. When rats are given an intranasal injection of buterophilin, they can be made to develop an inflammatory disease that kind of resembles multiple sclerosis. Now, these rats were specifically conditioned to develop autoimmune disease. These are not just random rats. Also, people with MS have higher levels of anti-MOG antibodies and anti-buterophilin antibodies. Now, this is not perfectly consistent in all studies, but this has been found. Now, this is comparing the buterophilin protein to the MOG protein. And if you look at the areas highlighted in blue, it shows that there's some homology or similarity between the structure of the protein. Now, this is found between many different proteins in many different animal and plant species, but it just explains how this potentially could occur, this cross-reactivity, this molecular mimicry. Now, this is an epidemiologic study known as the Holism study done by Dr. George Jelinek, which shows that dairy consumption is linked to worse physical and mental health in people with MS. And this is an interesting study where he surveyed people and it's kind of patient reported data. And it is potentially biased because George Jelinek is known to promote a dairy-free diet, but still it is fairly powerful data. However, there's also evidence against dairy as a cause of MS. For instance, in the famous Harvard Nurses Health Study, there's really no clear link between dairy and MS. I'll, get, I'll talk more about that a little bit later. 
there is no link between MS and cow's milk antibodies, cow's milk IgE. There's no link between anti-casein antibodies and multiple sclerosis. Children who have a cow's milk allergy do not have higher or lower risk of MS. You could suspect they could have a lower risk because they don't drink milk because of the allergy. There's a cross-sectional study in Iran that showed that people with MS are actually less likely to regularly consume dairy, 56.6% versus 67.5% of controls. But this is a cross-sectional study, so it's possible that people with MS change their diet in reaction to the diagnosis. Now let's take a closer look at the Nurses Health Study 1 and 2. On the left-hand column, you see servings of dairy per day from less than one serving per day to greater or equal to six servings per day. And on the right-hand column, you see the risk of multiple sclerosis. And I apologize, some of the numbers are cut off, but I actually found a slightly different result in the study. If you compare each group to each group, you'll see that there's no clear statistically significant association. But the greater than six group had a 29% higher risk of multiple sclerosis. In other words, a 1.29 relative risk compared to the relative risk of one for people consuming less than one serving of dairy per day. And when I did linear regression on these numbers, I actually did get a statistically significant association between milk consumption and MS with a p-value you can see of 0 0.035. Now, if you look at whole milk only, it turns out that there is an increased risk of MS, but only in people who consume more than three servings of whole milk per day. And you can see that on the right-hand column, there's a 47% increased risk. The number blocked off on the far right column is 1.47. This was actually not statistically significant though. Now, unfortunately, the NARCOMS data, the North American Research Committee on MS data, did not replicate this result. In fact, they found the opposite that if you looked at those in the top quintile, in other words, the top 20% of dairy consumption, they actually had a 23% lower risk of severe versus mild disability compared to those in the bottom quintile of milk consumption. Now, George Jelinek comments on this in his book saying, it's not really fair to compare people in Western societies because everyone's sort of consuming milk. So it could be that there's a threshold effect that you really have to strictly abstain from milk to get any benefit. And that certainly could be true. However, you know, when I look at the Danish Religious Society's health study, I look at the concept, do vegans have a lower risk of MS? And the Seventh-day Adventists in this study, who are often vegetarian or vegan, do not seem to have a, clo clo a clearly lower risk of MS compared to Baptists. They have a lower risk of various cardiovascular diseases, but not necessarily MS. And if you look on the left side of the chart, you can see that there are a total of four cases of multiple sclerosis, and there were expected 7.3 cases. So perhaps a slightly reduced risk, but this was not statistically significant. So what are my thoughts on the topic? I do think there's some evidence for a possible link between dairy and multiple sclerosis. I certainly don't think it's definitive, but perhaps if you want to be conservative and you want to avoid everything that could potentially be linked to MS, perhaps it is reasonable to avoid dairy. I'd love to know your thoughts, so please post in the comments below. Do you avoid milk and dairy, and what are your experiences with it?